Welcome to another CEO Wisdom Podcast. Today with us is Adam Connors. He is CEO at NetworkWise. So we're going to talk about mastermind, network, commitment, mindset, everything in between. This podcast is brought to you by podpire.com. Podpire is my podcast agency. If you want to start, scale, be invited to a podcast or even sponsor, find a sponsor for your podcast. Podcasts are pretty much gold mines. You can connect with people. You can generate leads, you can generate the community, you can generate clients, you can do good because you share value for free and you can learn insights. They're now my uh, main learning stack. And for those that know me, I'm obsessed with learning. So podbuyer.com if you want to start or scale podcast. Adam, I am glad to have you on for first uh, 15 minutes rapid fire session. We're going to do a round two, uh, but tell me a bit more about yourself and your company. Wow, appreciate that. And let me echo your sentiments just about podcasts and what they do on just a holistic level. I, I, I'm just such a fan, Let you know, again, echoing some of your sentiments, whether it's just learning, connecting, having an excuse to just have a conversation with someone that maybe you might not necessarily connect with um, in general. So uh, thank you for having me on the show. Love talking to you. I, you know, I'm sure this conversation is going to go in a lot of different directions. And now to answer your question, uh, I run a company called NetworkWise. What we do is we expedite outcomes for people in all facets of their life, uh, essentially through teaching them how to build real relationships and do what we call, you know, quote unquote networking, or, or what we like to say is we teach people how to network wise. Right. So who are your core clients? Who do you target with that one? So we get two different models. Uh, one is B2B. So organizations, typically um, the majority of our clients have been Fortune 50 companies, but I, I don't want to dissuade anybody from reaching out because we do work with small businesses too. And I'm partial to small businesses because I'm a small business. Um, so we, so that's the B2B model working with, you know, elite organizations that value talent, you know, the number one predictor of career success is the quality of your relationships. This is a documented fact. So, you know, the organizations that value people that value relationships that really understand how important the ability to be able to connect with others are hire us, um, we also have, you know, when I say B2C, we have a, you know, we've codified what it means to network. So we created a certification. So individuals that are interested in really learning what networking truly is, uh, have an opportunity to go through our course and become, you know, network-wise certified professionals. Wow. Okay. So what do you think about my bot strategy? Because I do get to speak with a lot of people I don't like the fact that it's surface level and really quick convo, but I use that as a stepping stone. Like for example, as right now, we're gonna speak for 15 to today. We're gonna rebook a 30 in let's call it three months from now. After that 30, if we still had a good experience, we're gonna book a 45. After that 45 is gonna be an hour and so forth. Plus I've got in the back end because I want you to comment on all my back end systems there, um, a newsletter. I do post a lot, okay? So that is overwhelming for some people. I do think it's top information. I do think I'm controversial. So some people will, will unsubscribe from that. Uh, the LinkedIn is also in part of the backend, but most importantly, I have this thing called level96.com, which is a free mastermind. It's like five of us and we record content out of that. There's accountability, there's goals, there's insights, there's connection and support. There's a uh, technology referral because you know my views on humans nowadays. I'd rather have an AI do the work for me and so forth. But that's a lot of value on the back. And I only invite my favorite folks to these masterminds because filtering is quite important. So what do you think about my backend system and where do you feel I could add quality to this quantity? Well, I think what you're doing is great. You know, first of all, you're just sincere. You care. And that's super important because people don't, people don't care. To, you know, there's a great Maya Angelou quote. I'm, I'm going to bastardize it, but you'll get the sense. It's like, you know, they don't care who you are, what you say, what you do. It's, it's, it's that you do care. It, it, her, her quote is so much more eloquent than that, but something to that effect. So first and foremost, you are sincere. You do care. You ask good questions. This, you're providing tremendous value. You're giving me an opportunity to get in front of, you know, your quote unquote networks. 
So, uh, and you're also providing all this value with all these different touch points. So you've got something that's called the proximity principle, right? So, so you know, out of sight, out of mind, but you're not out of sight. You are front and center. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like driving by a deli all, you know, every day, you know, at some point you're going to be, at some point you're driving by, someone's going to need to get a drink, use the bathroom, pick up some eggs or something. Well, guess what? you know, with all the touch points that you have, at some point, you're going to be front and center of my mind. And there's going to be something either I personally need, or maybe someone in my networks could benefit from listening to your show, which is excellent. There's stuff that you can learn again, getting back, back to providing the value. So you've got good systems, you've got good processes, you're genuine. And you know, you do you take a proactive approach to your relationships and how I define you know, how we define, I should say, networking and network wise, it's about taking a proactive approach to relationship development with the ultimate goal of benefiting somebody else. It's not about you. So what we do is we teach people, you know, how to take their, you know, turn their relationships, you know, I'm sorry, I should say their connections into relationships that ultimately become their allies. So, you know, that's what you're doing. You know, you're, you're initiating, you're starting out strong, you're building, you're sincere, building those relationships, you're reinforcing it, getting to know each other. The more times that we talk, that solidifies things. I mean, I could go on and on. At the end of the day, if you haven't figured out, I'm a fan, like what you're doing. And uh, I would say to just keep, you know, and, and what you also said too, is that you're uh, very authentic. So, not everybody, you know, you're not trying to cater to everybody. So, so you are being who you are. And I'm a big fan of something that I call addition by subtraction, right? Like, you know, cutting the people that aren't necessarily in your tribe, you can't cater to everybody. You're not going to get everybody to like you it's just as much as we'd like everybody to like us. It's just not, it's just not realistic. So um, it's great. I, I, you know, again, I'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies. Right. I think on your side, like you're experimented into all of your experience as a person and you're the win-win type of guy. I think probably one to 10% of the population is that way. I'm I'm not sure if most humans operate on that mindset. I'd say that most operate on win-lose. So can you turn these win-lose into wins? And would you agree with the statistic that only 10% of folks are win-win out there? I'd say it's less than ten percent. I would I would think it's significantly lower. It, it, it's a, it's amazing to me the the sea of mediocrity that's out there. And I, and I don't want to put myself on a pedestal because I've got tons of flaws. But you know, I think a lot of people really hinder themselves by not trying to benefit other people, and they don't realize that I, I call you know I call what I do selfish benevolence. You know, like I'm, I, I want to see you do well, Charles. I just genuinely want to see you do well. And the irony is the better you do, if I'm in your circle, if I'm in your proximity, you know, I'm, I'm coming along with you. So, so I do want to genuinely see you do well, but if you do well, and as you're doing well, typically rising tides lift all ships. So if, if I've provided value back to you, there's a high probability you're going to take me along for the ride. So I mean, listen, genuinely, I just want to see people do well, but I, I I, think it behooves people to do anything but support other people. So, you know, that's that's been my philosophy. It's the stuff that we train people how to do, and it's worked out really well for me. Right. Because the podcast experiment so far, it has paid off. I've had some leads, right, of folks that were like, hey, Charles, what do you do? And you made me win. I want to make you win. Most didn't. So how can I increase the win-win there? Is, is it just by always giving, always giving and not expecting anything in return, having the systems to constantly add value and being patient? Do you think that yeah, because my second question to that is, does it take a while to get a return after giving, giving, giving? And three, should I just not expect anything in return? So excellent question, by the way. Um, you got to be careful about always giving because there are people out there that I call assholes. So those are the people that are constantly taking, taking, taking or take holes, if you want to call them that. And 
you know, again, I, I fall. This is one of my biggest issues is I just keep giving. And then you realize, oh, my God, they're that's, you know, the only time they're calling is when they need something. So at some point you do have to kind of cut bait. That's, again, getting back to the addition by subtraction. But, you know, listen, I, I wish I could tell you there's a magical formula like, hey, for for every you know two gives, you get a you get a or, you know, it's like going to a bank, you know, every two donations or deposits, you can get a. a um What's it called when you take money out? Of course, now <laughs> withdrawal. Withdrawing. But yeah, so I don't know if there's necessarily a formula, but what, what's going to happen is people are, and, and people will disappoint. Unfortunately, it's just reality. But when you've you've given enough and it's genuine, um, like for me, I, yeah, I'll do almost anything for anybody, right? Like I live by something called a five minute favor. If there's something that, you know, my friends want and anything less than let's call it five minutes, really 10 minutes, how could I say no to that, right? Like, so um, because I do that, I have no qualms asking anybody for anything, you know, and it's typically not me that I'm asking for. I'm usually asking for something for somebody else anyhow. So it's genuine. And, and you you embody a lot of that also, um, if not, you know, if not all of it and then some. So, you know, you're 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 putting together this great show. You're providing value. You're giving us an opportunity to share our message with other people. You know, you and I before this, the only reason we're doing 15 minutes to those who are listening is because Charles spent 15 minutes helping me with my Zoom profile. Right. So that cut into our time. So you're providing again, getting back to the value. So I'm seeing who you are. I'm seeing your character. So. People like that, that value people, that value relationships are going to want to do something for you. Again, getting back to seeing you succeed. So maybe, you know, maybe it's reaching out to some of these other people that and just giving them a soft ask. Hey, you know, can, can you endorse me on LinkedIn? Just something that's just so simple, you know, and then the people that don't, you know, you know, maybe you give them two chances or something. Oh, hey, in case you missed my my message, I'd love to see if you could endorse, you know, the the you know my podcast or whatever it is that you're doing. And if they can't even respond to you, you know, you're learning a lot about who they are. They've got no problem taking, but you know, it's so funny how when somebody needs something, how how quickly they'll reach out to you. So mm, put up I, their I, nice face. Yeah, I, I hope that answers your question yes it does it uh, a lot and thank you for the the compliments there and i think that's why my my heart is like uh torn apart by this employee model you know it never fucking worked like let's say you know i paid them to actually give my valuable time and my valuable learnings and they're like they're even then they're pissed you know so i think I, I think, you know, it's just, even if you try to give to someone that's not receptive, you know, they'll never understand that. For example, my, my time is, is worth uh, money, for example, because, and, and the reason is simple. They can't do anything with these learnings because they don't have the mindset to start their own ventures and so forth. So I, I really think it's fundamentally broken. I'm glad that I've taken the, the AI road sort of uh, to what you were saying. Yeah, uh, I get these uh, people that ghost me, you know, um, I, I do well with that way better than I do with like the employee thing, because uh, it's it's way more uh, investment of energy. Yeah, the take holes. Um, I think by targeting like CEOs, I think generally speaking, CEOs and founders are a bit more virtuous, uh, def definitely more than uh, nine to fivers, I, I think, uh, because yep. the employer by default is like take and is like, yeah, just pay me, you know, I'll spend my time in your business and pay me whatever happens, you know, even if I don't generate value for you. Anyway, um, so my my question for you is, uh, my audience, how can I add more value uh, to them? Because for example, warmly, right, like technology, I think that tech is really the direction that humanity is taking. I think that employee model, I think it's going to fall. It's already fallen uh, it's quite significantly. So if I just uh, try technology myself and share my findings and share my systems with people, I think that would be very valuable for them, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would ask them, you know, you've got, you've got a good, decent following. You've been providing a lot of value, maybe asking them what is, you know, in, in the past X amount of time, you know, what has been, is there a clear, is there a number one takeaway you've had 
from listening, following, whatever it is that services that you're providing, or or if not that, are there the you know what have been the top three? And you'll start seeing a common thread amongst those. And that's something that maybe you want to double down on. You know, love that. Yeah, quizzing my audience. I need to do that more. So I was thinking to deploy um, a project pretty soon, which is a Google form that like CEOs filled. So I have 1.4K uh, subscribers to my newsletter. It's probably growing by 75 uh, subscribers per week. And I would just ask them, for example, to answer a Google form. It would be 15 yep. questions. They could get access to all the other CEOs answers uh, that answer that form. And I could make a book and feature them in the book. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, again, that's a great idea too. You're providing value. So you're not just asking, you're saying, hey, here are the people and that's a, it's great exposure. And it would be silly of them not to get that because it's something that they can then post on their LinkedIn, on their resume, something that they participated in. Again, showing the value that they bring to the table. So I, I think that's, uh, I, yeah, I love that idea. And, and I'm happy to participate if you need some help. There you go. Yeah, I just need to find someone or something to handle the, actually, I, I will deploy it myself, you know, because think back to the employee model is like, oh, how can she deploy it? But she just doesn't understand how to do it or she's just overwhelmed by my brain. So I think it's just building the form and emailing the newsletter, probably having follow-ups because not a lot of people I think would uh, sort of fill that one. Um, that's that's also a problem for me is that in my backend, there's so many offers, right? Like you'll yeah. get my emails, my email once will be done with this pod, but it's like, Yo, if her podcast reach 100 views, then I do a YouTube short. Then it's like, hey, can you write me a recommendation on LinkedIn? Hey, can you join my mastermind? Can you join my newsletter? Can you follow me here? How, what would you suggest that I do on, on that level? How should I keep it simple for the prospect or the the relationship I'm building? I should say prospect here. Say, say, say it one more time, the, the, your ask, just so I can make sure I understand it. I have like 15, so it's quite a long list, but it's like, recommend me on LinkedIn, share okay. the cast, obviously. Um, let, let me let me interrupt. Let me interrupt you for, I think I understand. So maybe reach out to the, to the people that are following you and say, listen, I'm building a business. I'm looking to expand with X type of person. I've got a bunch of things that I could need some assistance with. If you can help me with one, you know, so you're giving list. What's the what you know with one of these things? Then, then you know, again, how can somebody say no? Here are all the different needs that you have. Maybe they can do a couple, but if you're at least just asking for one, you know, yeah. whatever you can do to make it easy for them. Yeah, I'm saying po post podcast. By the way, it's like not cold, right? So you, the email I'll send you, you. You'll see after we're done. It's it's pretty lengthy, but what I'm getting from they're not going to read it. They're not going to read length. There you go. So I think, I mean, I'm going to send the email anyway, if their brain loves to read like these 15 points and, and so forth. Some people are, are like that. Most won't feel it. I understand. But what I should do is like, we end the pod. And then after a conversation, I'm like, Hey, you know what? Like this would be the best offer that I have for you to help you out of the 15 that I ha had in mind. I think that'd be great. And in your case, or in everyone that I love talking with, it's pretty simple. It's like, let's book a 30 minutes. Let's book a 45. Also an invite to my mastermind. That's pretty obvious so that we can keep touch on a recurring base. I think like video communication is the best way to keep touch with someone and get to know someone and go down in the, the relationship hole if you want. So yeah, I think I think should keep it to that. But Thank you for, for the insight, Adam. Where can people find out more about you? Yeah, the easiest way they can either find me on LinkedIn, Adam Connors, although there's probably a million of me out there, um, or the, the best way is just networkwise.com, N-E-T-W-O-R-K-W-I-S-E.com, networkwise.com. And I, I offer, like you, there are a plethora of resources out there for free. And uh, I'm just trying to provide as much value as possible similar to like what you're doing. There you go. I think you'll pop first on LinkedIn because you have 11K uh, followers. So yeah, that was oh, Adam okay. Connors, mesdames et messieurs, and I am Charles Cormier, host of founderwisdom.com.